This is Dwarf Fortress. I'm the Wizard of What. I'm going to be playing and hopefully teaching some people or maybe even improving some people who've played a little bit already. Dwarf Fortress. It's a game I've been playing for years and years. I can't remember when I jumped in. It was after 2D, definitely, but it's been around for a long time. It's one of my favorite games. Uh, I don't want an intro to run too long, though, so this video is just going to be uh, generating a world. So you can go ahead and skip it if you want to use something you already have or use the create new world option, which gives you kind of a simplified world generation. But we're gonna go ahead and do new world with advanced parameters. So for those of you who maybe are not familiar with Dwarf Fortress, what Dwarf Fortress is kind of goal is to be a fantasy world simulator. So one of the things that it does is every time you want to play, you generate a world randomly that includes the geography and the layout, as well as things like where different kinds of civilizations are and animals and the biomes and all that sort of thing. This is going to look super overwhelming immediately to anybody who hasn't looked at the screen, but I assure you it's not as bad as it seems. And I'm not going to show absolutely everything because even I don't mess with you know, 90% of the settings. But as far as size goes, I usually go large. Um, if your computer has a weaker CPU, um, generating the world will take longer because it's a very CPU intensive process. So that would be one reason you could go smaller. There are some other ones, but none that would matter to a newer player. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and then enter advanced parameters. So the first thing is seeds and seeds are just something that a computer will use to generate a random number. And so you can give Dwarf Fortress seeds, and I'm going to put seeds in so that if you copy what I put in on this screen, you will get the exact same world out and you could very easily play along. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll tell it, yes, we want seeds. I'll just put wizard into every category here. All right, so embark points, don't wanna mess with that. Um, but you can see below that you have keys to increase, decrease, and enter a specific value and nullify the value. And those are on most of the ones that you can control. End year is important, however, for whatever reason, the advanced parameters defaults are in the thousands, which is uh, basically insanity that would take you in real time probably over 24 hours. I might be exaggerating but it, world generation takes longer the, the more years it gets into so generally anywhere from like 50 to 300 tends to be reasonable depending on how patient you are and how long you want to wait. Uh, for this world I'm going to go to just 125 because that'll keep it um, short but the world will still have some history. Uh, population cap, we're not gonna touch this, but population cap basically says how many citizens a civilization is allowed to have at a given time. If you don't have this, then um, you tend to have civilizations just kind of like taking over the world and being the only civilization, and you know, that's not fun. Uh, site cap similarly, except it's just the specific location. Uh, this is another one that you might wanna change. Usually I nullify this and set it to ignore, Percent, may, percent beast dead for stoppage, what that means is one of the things that happens when a world is created in Dwarf Fortress is the generator puts in a certain number of mega beasts and semi mega beasts. And these are basically just really powerful animals like um, dragons, rocks, ROC, uh, the, you know, the giant bird, uh, titans, things like that. Basically, whatever that percentage is, it says, okay, once I hit a certain year, I'm going to just kill that percentage of beasts so that the civilizations have an easier time growing. And that's fine, because it does help the civilizations grow a lot, but I like to leave it just because I like all the mega beasts to stay, so. And then, of course, this is the year it starts checking, and it's pretty high anyway, so if you're under you know, 300 with a default, it wouldn't make a difference. But again, if you want your mega beasts to mostly go away at a certain point, that's how you do it call all important historical figures. This is for the legends mode where you just look at information for the world. You wanna leave it yes, because it's already a nightmare to look through to begin with. So uh, I'm just gonna start skipping over stuff I usually don't mess with. Um, these things, if you mess with them randomly, you're probably gonna have a world that can't actually finish generating. If 
you have parameters that the generator can't meet, it'll just keep trying to make a new world over and over until it hits the parameters. So it'll basically just be stuck trying to make a world that fits parameters it can't hit. You know, minimum uh, and maximum volcanism you can mess with a little bit because volcanoes are good places to put fortresses. So, you know, you wouldn't want to put that above like 10, but you could adjust that up a little bit. Same with a lot of these other things. The meshes as well, this is the whole thing where it's it's waiting how big of an area to put down basically. And so if you put a two, it'll put like two, it'll weight it so that it has two for every one of the other ones. But again, if you mess with these and you're not careful, it can often end up with a generator that can't actually finish. So usually don't touch those. Pull you can mess with, that's if there's uh, you know an Arctic area near the north or south or wherever you want to put it. Um, we'll just leave it at north and our south. Um, minimum mountain peaks. This is one I usually like to bump up a little bit just because uh, at the base of mountains is one of the best places for a fortress. Minimum partial edge oceans. I don't like water. It makes something that's hard to deal with in fortresses if you're not far enough away from the coast. So I like to set the required number of oceans to none. Volcano number, again, I like to bump that up because volcanoes are fun. Mineral scarcity, the higher that is, like the farther apart things that you turn into metals and whatnot are. So that's something I also like to lower because you're, you can't tell what is going to be out of sight before you embark. So it makes the game easier the lower it is in some ways. Uh, Mega Beast caves are where Mega Beasts live. So the more there are, the easier it is for Mega Beasts to hide and find places to stay, basically. And then tight number is literally the number of Mega Beasts it puts in at the start of world generation. And then this is fairly straightforward. This is for your fortress, how many population you need and wealth requirements you need before a Titan will attack it. So this is another way to make the game easier if you raise these numbers, like if you put this up to 100. Um, number of demon types, These, this again is, it says types because there will be multiple of every kind, but it randomly generates these sorts of things. So there will be certain types of demons, for instance, but there will be multiples of every type it generates. The only thing that you might want to mess with, although this you can mess with and it usually won't hurt anything, is bogeymen. Bogeymen are something that are really only an issue in adventure mode, but if you're planning to play adventure mode, I would go ahead and change that to none. And again, a lot of this um, square count, initial counts, final counts, um, you don't want to mess with unless you have a better idea of what you're doing. And again, if you look this up on the wiki, they have explanations for what all this does and all that stuff. Um, erosion cycle, well, it erodes down all the hard edges on everything, which I like hard edges, so I like to lower that a little bit usually. Um, I don't like to erode as extreme cliffs. And some of these like do orographic precipitation and rain shadows. I'm not sure what that actually does, but I've spent some time playing with these things to see if I can get fun things to happen. Um, magma layer and bottom layer you want, that just basically means if you go down far enough, there's a magma sea. Uh, cave size is interesting because there's usually a, a layer or two of caves underground. And if you set these both of these numbers higher, they become more open. And if you set them smaller, they become more constricted. But that's not something I like to mess with. Make case visible, might as well. Short tones on embark. Uh, number of civilizations you can also mess with. I think by default there's humans, dwarves, elves, goblins, and animal people. And by animal people, I mean the game randomly generates a animal and then makes a half animal, half person hybrid sort of thing. So if you make this higher, it'll be more densely populated, but also civilizations are one of the big things that um, makes world generation CPU intensive. So, you know, be warned, it won't, it, it'll be able to generate a world, but the higher you put this, the longer it'll take. But I'll leave that at 40 for now. So that's all that. So we will hit escape to back out of that. And then I'm going to save these parameters. And then I will go ahead and generate something. So now it's generating the world. 
you can see on the right, it'll kind of show various areas as it's forming it. Um, and you'll see at the top, it says creating new region and then in brackets five rejected. That's how many worlds that it started and then it didn't meet a parameter set, so it threw it out and started over. So if you mess with more of those settings and your rejected count is going really high, it means it has a set, it has settings that aren't gelling with each other. But either way, we're going into the age of myth. Uh, there's more ages, they depend on many variables. Usually it's how many mega beasts there are. As they die, it goes from myth to legend and so on and so forth. Although there are some interesting special ones, but so it's like this is gonna generate pretty quickly. We have how many people the game deems important, how many have died, how many things have happened. And then one thing you can do is press enter or escape to pause finish. If you do that, usually it'll stop a second. During this process, um, if you get up into the higher years and you try to stop it, it will definitely look like the game has crashed or frozen. Usually it hasn't, but that is possible, but you just have to be patient with it if you're setting your years up higher. So several things you can do here, as you can see at the bottom is Use the world as it currently exists. That means it just stops it, saves it, that's it, you're done. Uh, continue makes it go, of course, and abort, it will actually take you back to the last screen. So um, if we didn't have all the seeds entered, you could go back and try it again if it's generating a world but you don't like something about it. Um, you can also use the arrow keys, and I'm holding shift here to um, jump farther, but you can use the arrow keys to look around and see what it looks like. Um, Again, I've played enough that I kind of have some pet peeves for worlds that I don't like to deal with, so I'll often look for those. This is an in uh, fairly interesting, though, because these... Uh, well, I won't get into it now, because some of you probably don't know what all these symbols mean, so you won't understand what I'm saying anyway. But we'll go ahead and continue that. And as well, once this world generates, I will... Um, go ahead and copy the save and then um, probably put that up with a video so that um, if you don't want to enter all those things manually, but you still want to play along with me, however I choose to do that, um, you'll be able to do that. So another thing that is nice to do before you finish is down there it says export image slash info. And what that does is it actually saves a image file of the entire map, as well as exporting a world file of some sort that has all the actual information on it. And that's nice because, well, like one of the things I'll use it for is I'll mark where all my forts are and things like that so I can keep track of them. But that's neither here nor there. That's just something I like to do. It gives you a better idea of what it looks like. So we'll accept that and it will save it. Again, bigger world, longer world takes more time to save. Basically, um, bigger worlds have more things. They have more places to go. They have more people and you know, generally more interesting things, higher chance of having interesting things, but the bigger you make it and the older you make it, um, the longer it's going to take you to um, save your games, open your games, generate the world, so it depends on your patience. Same thing with size, smaller worlds, they save faster, they generate faster, etc. And so, uh, once you sort of get a feel for the game, maybe after you've played a couple forts in a world, you can go back to the world generator and maybe fiddle with the settings and see if you can get a world that you like a little more, make it a little harder, make it a little easier, get rid of something, add more things, whatever you want to do. And then uh, when you want to start playing, you hit start playing. And we have Amathlina and Fortress Adventure Legends. I'll go ahead and go into Legends real quick because that's just information. So if you want to get to Fortresses, I just go ahead and skip to the next video now. Uh, but you can look at this stuff, these historical figures, and we have um, the first stuff is always going to be titans because they're the first things that get generated. So we got colossuses, hydras, rocks, dragons. Um, if you see down here, this hydra, it has a D60. That means it died in year 60. And then if you hit enter on that, you can see its history. It usually tells you when it becomes enemies, when it kills people, when it fights people, stuff like that. Um, You can also hit page up and page down to jump to the top or the bottom, obviously, but um, it'll tell you how many things it's killed, what it's related to, yada yada. Um, didn't kill that many people, but it was killed by an elephant. Wow, that is something. And this is why 
this is why I love Dwarf Fortress, because there's so many systems interacting with each other that you have hydras that get killed by random wild animals, and that's great. So, now if I really wanted to dig into this, and I actually might off screen, I could probably find that elephant, because that elephant might have gotten a name for killing this hydra, but that would... No, it just says struck down by an elephant. So if it had a name, it would probably have the name there. So there's some random elephant with a hydra kill somewhere, maybe. Actually, it's probably dead by now because we're in year 125. But that's the kind of awesome, wacky stuff you run into. So that'll probably be it for this video. And next time we will get into preparing for your fortress.